Welcome to the uh, award ceremony for our 2020 and 2022 classes of the Biomedical Technician Training Program and the FOX Biomedical Research Training Program. Uh, it's a great day. It's a great day of celebration. It's a great day of success. And first of all, first and foremost, my most heartfelt congratulations to all of the graduates of the BTT and the BRT program this year. As some of you know, the, uh, this program has been around. has been around for the past 20 years, particularly the BTT program, has been inspired and led through the vision of uh, Dr. Bill Warner at Worcester since the year 2000. And on that foundation of, uh, of excellence, uh, Christy Schutte McGuire and Eddie David Zuzga, uh, more recently Jason Diaz, have dramatically expanded the program, expanded its reach and impact. The program is built on a very simple principle of collaboration, partnership, energy with community college, first with the Community College of Philadelphia, but now more broadly to other community college. Welcome, Montgomery County. And the idea is to, um, to try to work at the inter to create an interface, to work at the interface between education and training and jobs and job creation, specifically in the life sciences. And I can tell you that, you know, um, life science research is not a job. It's a career. It's an adventure. It's always something new, something different. Uh, working in a lab is uh, the best thing ever. Because, uh, first of all, you never really know what you're going to find. That's the idea of discovery. And second, doesn't happen every day that you go home, you drive home, or you bike home, or whatever, or you take SEPTA. I do. And you think, uh, boy, you know, a good day's work today, I'm working to help people. And I don't think you have to look much further than what happened over the last 24 months, right? With the COVID pandemic, where research, vaccine, discovery and development have an estimated, have had an estimated impact where about 20 million lives were saved. Without the vaccines, the US would not have had, unfortunately, 1 million casualties, 1 million deaths related to COVID. Probably that number would have been 20 times higher. So it's a great day to uh, celebrate uh, research, to celebrate how Worcester tackles the issue of creating jobs and opportunities in the life sciences. And more importantly, it's a great day to celebrate our graduates today. And with that said, let me turn the podium on to our Dean of Biomedical Studies, Mr. Shula McGuire. Thanks, Dario. And thanks everybody for joining us both um, in person and uh, those of you online. Um, I'd really like to thank uh, Dario and um, everyone at the Wistar Institute for their support for our expanding um, education and training initiatives. Um, I wanted to specifically point out that Wistar's new uh, uh, strategic plan and capital campaign, Bold Science Global Impact, um, features education and life sciences as one of our uh, three pillars. Um, and uh, with that capital campaign has um, brought us the naming of our new Hubert J.P. Schumacher Education and Training Center. And um, under uh, that, our first uh, named uh, program, our Fox Biomedical Research Technician uh, Apprenticeship. So we are very uh, grateful uh, for um, uh, th those uh, namings and um, excited for what the future holds for education and training at WISTAR. Um, I, before I uh, go further, I really wanted um, to uh, give credit and thank um, my predecessor, Dr. Bill Werner. Um, many of you know that Bill and I worked together uh, for a number of years um, uh, with the Biomedical Technician Training Program. And actually, I was thinking of him uh, fondly yesterday as I was traveling um, between sites on a 90 plus degree day, walking through the city of Philadelphia, because uh, that was something that uh, Bill and I did together for a number of years. Um, so as uh, Dario said, Bill developed the BTT program back in 2000. And um, in fact, we are actually honoring today uh, the last student from the uh, 2020 cohort 
that started under uh, Dr. Werner and our uh, two BRT apprentices. Um, so Dr. Werner retired at the end of 2021 after 45 years of exceptional service uh, to WISTAR. Um, although I have to add that he uh, is still actually helping with our institutional biosafety committee. So WISTAR hasn't let him go yet. Um, so if we could just have uh, a round of applause to recognize. Um, I would also like to say thank you to longtime education uh, partner, Community College of Philadelphia, um, especially the new Dean of Math, Science and Health Careers, um, Dr. Vishal Shah, and uh, BTT Program Academic Coordinator, uh, Dr. Dominic Salerno, who is here today um, for their support of this program. And then thank you to our newest education uh, partner, Montgomery County Community College, um, especially the Dean of STEM, uh, Dr. Jamie Bretz, and uh, the coordinator of the biotechnology program, Dr. Maggie Bryans, um, who is also joining us today. Um, and as uh, Darius said, Montgomery County Community College really marks our first um, uh, regional expansion of the biomedical technician training program. So we're very excited for that. Um, thank you to our funders, especially the National Science Foundation Advanced Technological uh, Education uh, Program, um, PA Smart Grants from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Department of Labor and Industry, um, and then uh, foundation support from Citizens Bank, uh, the Ann M. and Philip H. Glatfelter the Third Family Foundation, um, GlaxoSmithKline, the Gray Charitable Trust, the Hassel Foundation, uh, Justamere Foundation, Keystone Development Partnership, the Brooke J. Lenfest Foundation, uh, Office Depot, Philadelphia Works, Pincus Family Foundation, and the Scholler Foundation. So I don't know if all of you students in the uh, program um, uh, realize that all of those um, and uh, the Fox family for naming the uh, Biomedical Research Technician Apprenticeship, but all, all of those um, funders have contributed to your ability to participate in uh, the program. So we are, are, are grateful for that. Um, and then uh, special thanks to Andreas Widmer and Dr. Ian Tishan um, for their help during the laboratory orientation. Um, they really helped the students get uh, off on a, a great foot in the program uh, this summer. Um, and then all of the uh, mentors and principal investigators who worked with our uh, uh, biomedical technician training pre-apprentices and biomedical research technician apprentices um, during their lab experiences in both academic and uh, industry labs. Um, and then finally, um, thanks to our uh, education and training uh, team members. So um, I really couldn't be doing this without the help of Dr. David Zuzga and um, our new team member, um, Jason Diaz. Um, but um, many of the students know that the person who pulls all of this together, the behind the scenes magic um, uh, from uh, Kaylee Bice. So she has definitely become the go-to person uh, for a lot of uh, students. And um, I hope uh, she and I will continue to be able um, to do that together. Um, and then thanks to uh, marketing and communications and institutional advancement um, and all of the departments at um, WISTAR that really help us pull this program together year after year. Um, it really takes a, a village or at, at least an institute. Um, so I am really excited uh, to bring to you um, two, three speakers, um, two students and one uh, alumna of our program. Um, so our first speaker today is Juan Esteban Perez Rodriguez, who our biomedical technician training program uh, students have nominated to speak um, on behalf of the 2022 cohort. So thank you, Juan. All right. Um, good afternoon to all the presents. We are here to celebrate today, our final day for our biotechnician, uh, biomedical technician training. But we also here to congrats uh, Georgina Moore uh, for the class of uh, 2020, and as well as uh, Fenwick, <laughs> Fenwick and Jane from the Fox BRT program. So I'm here today on behalf of the BDT class of 2022 to express my gratitude towards the program and towards the Wizard Institute. Uh, during our first day of orientation, 
we were first introduced to the 16 people who we spend most of our summer. Uh, we start by learning their names and also like why we first wanted to come to the program. But then uh, if there's one moment that uh, it really makes that moment memorable, it was when Dr. Salerno asked us uh, who was from the uh, Community College of Philadelphia and who was from Montgomery County Community College. To which Dr. Chris Shula McGuire um, just complied and said that we're non, we neither one of those. Uh, we are the BTT program. We are a family, we are just one. So those five words were a total game changer because from that moment, people who have only known for like at least 24 hours to start like teaching, learning from and support each other, especially when we have like our labs meetings, uh, that by the way is uh, a new addition to the program's orientation this year. Uh, and it's impressive to see how much a person can change in such short amount of time, because those people sitting in the seats right now are nothing like they were before. I can see now like very inspired, uh, fearless, and very determined. And I assure you that any of them can come up to the stage and start talking about the experience during the summer and how much they learn. This time in the program has opened my eyes uh, to perspective about what it really means to work in a laboratory, the time and the effort that the that daily technicians, PhD students, postdocs, and even PIs um, have to do to support their research, including these ups and downs. But what it really to, uh, like surprises me today is the spark in their eyes when they're talking about their projects and their ambition, their goals, that now that's one of the things that I can see in every one of you here today. Uh, this opportunity has also shown me that whether you're part from academia or industry, the desire to do good science will always be present. So for that, I encourage you now, uh, new BTT and Fox BRT student, to never let the spark inside of you to vanish and to know uh, to feel proud of the long road you have taken to be here today. And finally, I would like to thank Dr. Christy Shula McGuire, Dr. Uh, Ian Tiagen, the Wizard Institute, and to all those uh, academic laboratories and industry companies that welcome us with open airs to experience, allow us experience one, if not the best summer of our academic journey. Thank you. Thank you, Juan, and thank you for agreeing to do that. I also had to do some arm twisting for our next speaker um, on behalf of the Fox Biomedical Research Technician Apprenticeship, uh, Jane Koshy. Hi, my name is Jane, and I will be talking about the BRT Apprenticeship Program. Um, it was a pleasure to hear from our previous speakers, particularly from the BTT uh, program, because I was also once in the BTT program. Uh, at the time, uh, I remember fondly, uh, Dr. Warner was, uh, I was in his office and uh, we had just finished our short rotations and he was asking me where I would like to be placed for my longer rotation. I just gave him all the floating thoughts about my experience and I asked him, could you give me somewhere in between those experiences? I don't know what that means still. I said it, but I don't know what it means. But he was able to figure it out and I am amazed uh, because he said later, I have the perfect place for you. It is the, it is the Abdul Mohsen lab at Wistar. And it was quite a pivotal moment for me, but I didn't realize that then I was just happy to be placed somewhere. <laughs> Uh, my subsequent three months at the Abdel Mohsen lab was basically me bothering the technicians and the postdoc Layla uh, with all of my questions. And there were many, many questions, but I must not have been as annoying as I thought, because when Layla needed uh, more help, she and Mohammed reached out to me a couple months later, and I got a part-time job as a lab assistant there while I was working to finish my undergraduate degree. I graduated last year, and Mohammed invited me of to be in a full-time position and it coincided um, with my 
qualifications to enter into the BRT program. When I, um, as a BTT trainee, Layla and Mohammed suffered through my many annoying questions. As an apprentice, they had to guide me through my mistakes, last minute obstacles uh, in whatever experiment I was running. And there were a lot of those moments. I joke that Layla should charge for her confessionals and cons consultations. She would be rich if you counted all the times I go to her confessing my many mistakes <laughs> and then the resulting uh, consultation on how to fix them and save the day. <laughs> but as the apprenticeship ran its course, those moments became less. And surprisingly, not only was I able to work independently, but suddenly I'm the one people were asking their many questions to. And it has gotten to the point that now I'm being asked to train others. And it's develop development that I am very bewildered by. <laughs> but that is what this program is for. With the guidance of so many experienced individuals, the right mentors are paired with the right technician in training. And these trainees become technicians who are capable of adapting to then work independently. So now I'm here and despite the many changes, there's one thing that hasn't changed and that's that Dr. Warner invokes my deepest appreciation and gratitude. It was an honor to speak today. Uh, I must thank Dr. Chrissy Shuda McGuire and Dr. Salerno from the program. I'd also like to thank my family. And lastly, I'd like to thank Layla and Muhammad and everyone at the Abdel Mohsen Lab for their support. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. That was that was great. And I love um, it coming full circle and you starting to mentor and train others in the Abdel Molson lab, um, because that is exactly what has happened with our keynote speaker today. So I would like to introduce you to uh, Lois Tolvinsky, who is the manager of laboratory operations at um, Chimeron. Hi everyone. Thank you, Dr. Sharon McGuire, for your invitation to speak today to the graduates, to their families and mentors, and to everyone here at Wistar. It's an honor to be here today to celebrate the BTT uh, pre-apprenticeship and the Fox BRT apprenticeship certificate awardees. So Chrissy asked me to be here today to share with you my own connection to BTT. And while I always struggle, to celebrate my own successes and even more to talk about them. Um, one thing I can confidently say is that I am a BTT success story. And I wanna share with you my story to hopefully be an inspiration to you and show that you can succeed as you take forward what you learned during your time here. 10 years ago, I was several years into a career as a professional pet sitter. And I was not even using the BA in political science that I had under my belt. So I started taking biology courses at the community college because I was really unhappy with where life was going. And I was attempting to transition from something way out of left field, a non-scientific to a scientific career. And this was driven by a passion that um, for science and medicine that was deeply rooted in an early exposure that I had to a hospital environment. It was, um, this passion was reignited as I dove back into these classes at the community college. Uh, when I was eight, my mother was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. She was in and out of the hospital for two years, and she was treated with chemo, uh, radiation, and surgery. And as you can imagine, suffered many of the adverse effects that can occur due to these types of treatments. And um, she unfortunately passed away when she was just 35 years old. And I think it was really this experience that motivated me to pursue work in that would drive the innovation and advancements in science that could help to improve outcomes for individuals like my mom. So the biology courses that I had taken at CCP led me directly to the BTT program at Wistar. As I was finally setting into the conclusion that I wanted to pursue a career in research. Here is where, like everyone else, I should thank Dr. Warner. He took a risk on me when he accepted me into the program. I had a lot of passion but I had very little practical knowledge and uh, the mentor's worst nightmare, I did not even know how to use a pipette. 
So as I began the first days of my training, it was with a lot of excitement, maybe some of the same excitement that you have today, and maybe some of the fear that you're also feeling. I think it was probably this fear that drove me to work harder than I think I ever had on anything. It also drove me to ask questions and more questions and even more questions and probably endeavor to take on a little more responsibility than my mentors were comfortable with, considering the experience or relative lack of that I had at the bench. But I wanted to prove that the risk that the directors of the program had taken on me was gonna pay off. Uh, at the time, a significant portion of Wistar was under construction, this beautiful building that we're in today. So my cohort's lab was actually at the Science Center. And here, this was an incubator space filled with biotech companies. It was my first real glimpse of what a life science startup looked like, and it was really exciting to see what my future might hold. So my second BTT lab internship was here at Wistar in Dr. Lieberman's lab. We were working on a small molecule drug discovery program, and I was incredibly excited to contribute. I felt like I had no idea what I was doing um, and was surprised when at the completion of my internship, they were impressed enough with my work that it led to an accelerated completion of my internship after which they hired me full time. I spent five years there continuing to learn and continuing to build on the foundation of skills that I established in my BTT education and training. I also had the pleasure of teaching the next years of BTT students that came to our lab. Through this experience, I learned that one of my favorite ways to learn was through teaching others. I worked alongside a talented group of scientists, postdocs, grad students, and other research associates. Support from these people was a significant driver of my career moving forward. And some of these people were my cheerleaders from the time that I started in that lab with BTT. I also made some really good friends in the lab. We ate lunch together every day, and they always went along good spiritedly with my many baking adventures. Like that one time I made a Diet Coke cake with Diet Coke ingredients, and it was decorated like Diet Coke um, to celebrate the birthday of one particular staff scientist who drank that beverage like water. Uh, the spoiler is that it was not a good cake. I don't, I don't recommend. Um, with this team of incredible scientists, our drug discovery program advanced and the small molecule received IND approval from the FDA. That meant that we could advance to phase one clinical trials. It was thrilling to think that the work that I was doing in the lab was actually contributing to the innovation and scientific advancement that I had always dreamed of. As a part of the team working on this drug discovery project, I was provided a window into what it takes to bring these emerging technologies to fruition. It wasn't just the science that was happening, but professionals who were experts in intellectual property, business development, regulatory compliance, and technology transfer are all at the forefront of discovery and innovation. And I had the opportunity to see these people in action here at Wistar. I was intrigued by the demand of these professionals to have the ability to speak to the multifaceted demands of new technology develop, development as they navigated FDA approval, patent applications, and licensing agreements. I wanted to dig more into this world behind the bench that was helping to bring our discoveries to the bedside. And with this new inspiration, I entered graduate school at Drexel University while continuing to work here at Wistar, and I pursued a master's degree in biomedicine and law. Thanks to the connections that I made through BTT and the Lieberman Lab, after my days in the lab, I moonlighted as an intern with Wistar's business development team. With this experience, I learned that I had aspirations beyond just the bench work, and I wanted to be a part of the teams of people who helped advance medicine from the bench to the bedside. The next step in my career took me to one of the top 10 pharma companies in the world. I landed a job at Janssen Pharmaceuticals. I think we all know that breaking into industry from an academic background can be challenging, but I was fresh off a master's degree and I was determined to keep the momentum going from the moment I stepped into my first BTT lab. I enjoyed sharing my non-traditional career story to the surprise of my industry colleagues, many of whom had done the familiar path of high school to a bachelor's degree, straight to a master's and or a PhD. And, um, Though my career path is not the most common story, it did show them that non-traditional routes can still lead to personal and professional successes. And today I am a manager of laboratory operations at Chimeron Bio. 
We're a biotech startup right here in Philadelphia. It's a place where I feel a deep personal connection to the science that we're doing every day. The kind of science that is driving the innovation and advancements that I had always imagined for patients like my mother. I am so grateful and so humble that my BTT beginnings have brought me to this point where I lead a team and I manage the scientific projects and all lab operations of our entire company. Chimeron is a company working at the cutting edge of RNA technologies to develop a first-in-class platform to bring more effective gene therapies and personalized medicines to patients. I began my position here just as COVID was shutting down entire cities, but we stayed open and we worked through very tough times as we shifted priorities and resources to search for an effective vaccine. Today, we continue to pursue a pipeline addressing infectious diseases, immuno-oncology, and other rare diseases. One of our company's core values, in addition to advancing the science of RNA therapeutics, is to be active in the community in ways that make a positive impact on our local life sciences ecosystem. And I knew that one of the best ways to do that would be to partner with Wistar to bring in the BTT trainees. And when I brought up the idea of BTT at Chimeron to company leadership, without hesitation, they agreed. So this summer was our first time hosting trainees, and I look forward to continuing this relationship into the future. None of this would have been possible without my start here at Wistar at BTT. To bring my experience full circle with BTT trainees at Chimeron Bio has truly been one of the highlights of my career. I wanna stop here and take a moment to thank the two trainees that Chimeron hosted, Diana and Umer. Um, it was an honor to have you both. And I wanna thank you both for allowing Chimeron to be a part of your story. My own story is not a particularly compelling one. There are many scientists out there who are working hard and realizing their own ambitions, but my story is one of success that has been built on the foundation of BTT training. My advice to the graduates is to ask questions and more questions. Learn from those you meet here who will help you on your journey. They will support you and they will encourage you to achieve. Chase your ambitions with the same zeal that you brought to your training. Lean into and savor your successes as you achieve them. Learn how to talk about your successes. You are the next generation of scientists who will push scientific advancement into the future. And I look forward to hearing your stories. But first, let us celebrate the completion of your training, a foundation on which to build your future achievements. Thank you, good luck, and congratulations. That was amazing, Lois. Thank you so much.